This video is proudly sponsored by Newtype. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewtypeHQ.com and use the link below to help this channel out for future builds. Hey, what's going on my dudes and dudettes and welcome back to another exciting build from your boy Utaku Builder. So, without further ado, let's get started by building the 160th scale, Yul Park Transformers Earth Mode Optimus Prime from the feature length film, Bumblebee. And without further ado, let's roll out. Hello and welcome back my dudes and dudettes, another exciting build from your boy Utaku Builder. And if this is your very first time onto this YouTube channel, welcome. So after having such a blast building the USS Enterprise refit, I have been itching to build another robot model kit. Maybe a Gundam model kit, possibly a Robotech, but since we're not getting the perfect grade this year from Bendai, I want to have my eyes locked on the Yolo Park Transformers Bumblebee Optimus Prime Earth Mode. Now, the box art itself is not much of a looker on both side to side, pretty much just promotional stuff, but when you flip on the other side, you definitely get a great representation on what this model can do when you put it in dynamic poses. Now, this is probably the first time I've ever heard of Yellow Park in the industry of doing Transformers IP, so they have a lot to live up to, something that's definitely loved by a lot of fans. So, when you open up the box art, you get a nice shot of the Autobot insignia, and at the same time, you get a welcoming introduction of the instruction manual. Now, this instruction manual is a really thick boy, so you definitely know what you're getting yourself into when it's at this top quality. As for the pamphlet inside, you get a nice certification that shows that what you're getting for this model kit while behind it gives you a complete chart of what pieces you need in case you lose something down the road or something that's missing definitely nice to have that on the side and as for the first promotional page you get you get this beautiful tight front and back shot of Optus Prime while at the same time giving you a glimpse of the inner frame and the ridiculous amount of articulation you can pull off from this model kit it is absolutely beautiful to see this representation being done on a movie accurate version of Optus Prime done in a model kit form it is insane looking, and I love the love and attention. First page gives you a complete layout on what you can expect for runners, and the second page gives you a complete layout of the runners in the complete color form, so that way you don't get confused at losing these pieces. Definitely welcoming. Do you appreciate that from this company to do this for this extra step? It's definitely welcoming. Next page gives you a small glimpse on what you can expect for weapon accessories, a small assortment of clear runners, and a small selection of water slide decals. Followed by the next page gives you a nice color chart on what you expect when you're constructing this Optimus Prime model which is great, especially for people that want to go the extra step of doing some custom painting a nice tight shot of the eyes which is great so at first you kind of think that this might have some kind of light piping led light system it doesn't which is unfortunate but the light piping is definitely welcoming for those who want to go the extra step of doing their own custom led light system now the sheer amount of detail that's in the head is just absolutely ridiculous but it's absolutely welcoming for something that is at this quality this kit is by far and by no means a cheap model kit but the fact that you are essentially not really a model kit but a collectible figure green is kind of intimidating for people that are building this model kit, but at the same time, someone that is a skilled builder will find this extremely familiar for someone that's used to building perfect great Gundams. And as for the second to last page, you get a nice profile shot of Octo Prime wielding his weapon accessories and a nice beautiful shot of the Matrix of Leadership. Now, we don't see the Matrix of Leadership in the movie, which is unfortunate, but it's nice the fact that they include it into this model kit. Definitely shows a lot of love and care went into this. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why would this model kit include a set of water site decals? They must serve a purpose, right? Well, will be more than happy to explain that later later on in the video. But first, let's talk about the first set of runners. Right off the bat, we are going to be getting the Interdron Axe and the Ion Blast are looking absolutely great. But right behind the bag, we get a small little glimpse of the inner frame pieces for the actual leg section for this Transformer, followed by two different tones of grays. One's going to be, I believe, for the intermix chamber for the Matrix of Leadership, followed by another set of light gray pieces, which you get a nice tight shot of Optimus Prime's face, while the same kind of other accessories that are going to be for the forearm and inner parts of the actual head. Next up, we're going to have these chrome pieces. Now, first and foremost, I need to address this. These chrome pieces are fantastic. Now, there is a very small selection of white runners. Those are going to be primarily for the shoulder blades, but the chrome pieces are fantastic. The surface detail, the quality of these chrome pieces have a beautiful sheen to it. And on top of that, the quality of this particular runners are on the same level you would expect from a Bendai high-end model kit or even a Kotobukiya surface detail level. These are great. Now, next up, we need to talk about the granddaddy colors of all, the classic dark blue and the red. Well, first, let's talk about the blue. The blues are great. They definitely give like a hint of a metallic sheen to it, which is absolutely welcoming, especially for those who are looking for more of a movie accurate look. But the red itself is probably the most wonderful thing about it because they're not too bright, they're not too dark, they're in that perfect sweet spot of pulling off that classic Optimus Prime look. 
Next up, let's touch briefly on the clear runners because there's only a small selection of clear runners for this model kit and particularly metal pegs that sit around the upper body of the torso. Now, the first clear runners are going to be the windshields, which is great. They have a nice little smoky gray look to them, followed by these light blue runners that are going to be for Octopus Prime's eyes. The metal blue runners is going to be for the Matrix of Leadership. I was a little concerned what these small little blue pieces were for, but they actually are affiliated with the Matrix of Leadership, which is great. It's a nice little added bonus to it. Next up, we're going to have the only metal pieces that are in this model kit, which are going to be for the upper body, and I believe this little spring section is going to sit in the very back part of the main cab area, so that way it can actually help close and contract uh, a closed compartment. And then last and finally, we're going to have the tires. These tires are great. Great deal of surface detail, definitely sells it off what it's trying to do for the job, and that is essentially it. This kit was very expensive to purchase, but at the same time, I have nothing but high hopes that this will actually deliver and possibly be the best Transformers model kit that I have ever built onto this YouTube channel. So as always, I took the time to assess what areas I want to tackle first, so logically I will tackle focusing on the head and focus on the upper body and then do some light work on the Matrix of Leadership. So next up we need to touch briefly on the next section of this model kit and that's why did this model kit come with its own water slide decals. Naturally when people build these model kits, they want to do their own custom paint job and when that happens, the original Autobot insignia is going to be lost. So they actually include some water slide decals to add onto the surface to help rectify the problem, but now it comes down to the color choices of paint. With the good folks who do type HQ, I took the liberty of buying my own selected few of colors from G Studios. Now, first and foremost, I was a bit hesitant to buy this product for such a long time because it is pretty expensive, but when you take in consideration that you're spending $300 on a model kit that needs to stand up to the test of time, it would really make sense to spend money on a high-end paint that would definitely do the job. Not only it's durable, it's airbrush ready, but it has great feedback from the Gundam community. It makes sense to jump on the bandwagon of trying out this wonderful paint. Now, the two primary colors I'm going to stick with right now is going to be the red and the blue. What I essentially want to do with the red and the blue is I want to stick with a nice flat red texture with having a little bit more of a darker saturated look but the blue part is going to be really interesting. When I bought the blue from G Studios, I thought at first it would be a great fit, but I want there to be a nice contrast between the red and metallic texture. So the standard blue that comes with this model kit, it's great. Once again, if you're doing a standard build, it's fine. But when I test out G Studios metallic blue, I was just absolutely blown about how crisp and how great it looks. So we're going to have two different contrasts between the metallics, the metallic blues and the flat reds.
right, the head looks absolutely phenomenal. There's some light bleeding underneath the neck section, but that's fine. It adds to the aesthetic. Now I'll count the next challenging part, and that's going to be the red runners. Now, like I mentioned on earlier in the video, I'm going to do the exact same method like I did with the blue runners. I'm going to hit the surface up with the black primer, and then go over the surface with Mr. G Studio Red paint on top of it. That's going to create a nice two-tone texture. Alright, now that I got the upper body partially assembled, it's now time to drill a hole through and through so I can funnel in the electrical wiring from the head to the main body. Now before we do that, I need to assess how I'm going to put it in a power supply. So logically it would make sense to put a coin cell battery to help illuminate three LED lights, but I need something that's slightly smaller. So thanks to the good folks from Evans Designs, I'll be using a 3 fold small coin cell holder battery with a switch. Now the switch is going to be really crucial so that way I have it installed in the back part of the spine so I can toggle it on and off when I choose so when I have the model kit on display.
Okay, we're like literally halfway done with the upper body. It's now time to tackle the waist section. Now the waist section isn't gonna be anything too complex, but there is definitely one looming area that's gonna to prove to be a problem, and that is going to be the chrome pieces. So naturally when I was on this particular section, I noticed that when I was cleaning out the nubs that it left a nasty little gap in the particular areas. Now what I mean by gap is like when you snip the pieces off, it just leaves like a scraping part to where the original chrome effect was, and now you just got the flat base plastic. So. Custom painting is definitely going to be a big factor on this. Now you have two options. You can actually go with something more of an actual chromomatic look to it, or you can get something that's close to the same kind of chrome look by using a different metallic paint. Now I did originally use G Studio Silver and I didn't like the reflective surface that I got. It was a little bit more too sparkly to my taste. I need something that's a little bit more refined that actually helps retain the nice metallic look. So I went back to using Vallejo's metallic pearl burnt metal. And this is probably bar the best metallic paint that is on the market in my opinion. So if you want an alternative, go with this choice. challenging part of this model kit and that's going to be assembling the legs now as you can see with one already fully assembled it looks absolutely stunning you get a really nice contrast between the metallics and the actual polar resin and a little bit of the burnt iron this is going to be absolutely stunning once it's fully assembled and fully painted and a little bit of a hint of a copper this is going to look really dynamic looking
Okay, now we reach the next fun part of this model kit, and that's going to be assembly that arm. So I've already taken the liberty off camera to paint these particular pieces, so that way I didn't have to deal with the hassle of recording it. Again, it's not too difficult to do. But the one challenging part I definitely want to put an emphasis on is these particular red runners. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? If you watch the brief scene where Optimus Prime is on Cybertron, on his right shoulder blade and his left shoulder blade, he has blaster damage. So I definitely want to create some indentation like you would see on Optimus Prime's shoulder. It's a very small, minute detail, but it's definitely something you would catch on it if you want to make something close to a movie accurate representation of Optimus Prime, which is something that I want to do. So I'm going to be using this journal tool to create like surface indentations on top and then at the same time paint it over with some silver paint.
Okay, now that the head, arm, torso, and legs are finally assembled, it's now time to do some light chipping and weathering effect. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? It's essentially trying to create like a nice depth and texture to it. Like the way you see Optimus Prime here, he is not heavily weathered, nor is he not heavily battle damaged. He's weathered enough to the point where it's in specific key areas, whether it's on the shoulder, parts around his eyebrow, on his shoulder blades, fingertips, you name it. I want to create a nice chipping and weather effect. So here's a good example of my test version of right here. It is very simple chipping and weathering effects with Mr. Hobby's paint and Tamiya's lacquer base silver. It is very subtle at the same time. When done effectively, it gives you fantastic results. So to make sure I don't make any mistakes, I make sure I have my reference sheet right here ready to go. And as you can see here, like I mentioned in the video, there's the chipping, there's the scraping, and there's that blaster damage I really wanna put some emphasis on. So I'll go over that area with an airbrush, but areas that have a nice little chipping and weathering effect, I really wanna emphasize that with the Tamiya silver to make it look really cool and dynamic looking. Alright my dudes and dudettes, as this video is wrapping up, I want to give you guys my thoughts and impressions on this model kit, and man oh man, this kit had a profound impact on me as a model builder, but most importantly, as a Transformers fan. 
And the one thing that definitely sticks out the most for me is the sheer amount of cavity space that's in the torso. Now, one would argue that the cavity space in there is strictly designed for enabling you to do like a nice dynamic front crunch for Optimus Prime. But the way how it's positioned and the way how the matrix of leadership is perfectly lined up in the center to where they would probably implement like a translucent ball peg connected from the matrix of leadership to the head to illuminate the eyes. The hints are there but I do believe that they just ran out of time and they were focusing on their bigger version of Optimus Prime. So I do believe that they just, they just ran out of time. And at the same time, they were also focusing on cost. Coming up with your own padded and LED light system for the head is no easy task. It takes a lot of time and a lot of uh, iterations to make the right version to where it's easy for the consumers to replace or repair or even to just swap out a simple battery. They just ran out of time. And I can honestly see that being a problem. And on top of that, it probably would have boosted the price up to like $350, adding on top of that with taxes. So from where it was at, at 300, it probably would have boosted up to like 370 to maybe $400. And for new customers, that would shy people away. And that's something that you don't want to do, especially when you've got such a well-established IP. So my understanding right now, they'll probably do another iteration of this Optimus Prime with their own LED light system, maybe a year or two or so, or possibly for the next iteration of Optimus Prime when we get the next Transformers film coming out next summer. So yeah, that's not a bad thing. But the one thing I really need to give a lot of love and respect for this company is the sheer amount of detail on the interior and external frame. It is by far the best I've seen from a company. On top of that, the sheer amount of articulation that you can get from this kit, it is at the same level as a flame toy collectible, as a 3-0. I wouldn't even go as far as to say that it is exactly at the same level as a perfect rate Gundam. Now, which version, it doesn't matter. It's insanely detailed. The articulation is on point. It's at the perfect price point for people that want to buy a very complex, but at the same time, a well-established IP. It's great. Now, let's say that you buy this model kit, but you don't want to do like a lot of custom painting or like a lot of weathering, like how I'm painting this Optimus Prime. That's fine. The color scheme is accurate. The metallic pieces are great you do not need to do any kind of custom painting. So it's perfect for beginners, it's perfect for novices, and it's absolutely designed for expert builders. This model kit has the perfect balance for everyone that wants to build this model kit. And I really, really appreciate that. I really do because a lot of people tend to shun away from model kits because there's a skill gap. And this kit basically says, no, you don't need to be a good painter. We already done the painting work for you. Just have fun constructed and you're good to go now there will be a small selection of you out there that are just feverishly typing on the keyboard whoa it's not a transformer if it doesn't transform look i get it the name of the ip is called transformers that's why there's other collectible toys there's collectible figurines that can do that for you this is first and foremost a collectible model kit okay it's not designed for little kids the last thing a parent needs to worry about is their little kid constructing this model kit and then choking on a small piece of plastic and you're stuck with a ridiculous hospital bill. Okay, that's not for everyone. So for everyone that's making that argument, just please, just stop, okay? We're meant to enjoy and appreciate these model kits for what they are. And for someone that works a 12 hour shift at a job and wants to take the time to like decompress from a stressful work week, I'm gonna enjoy this model kit, okay? I'm gonna do that, okay? So you got your toys, you got your model kits, everyone's happy. So the next burning question you guys are probably asking yourself, is this worth the purchase? My God, yes, it's worth the purchase. Oh my God, I can't stress how much fun I had working on this model kit, man, it was great. And the fact that we're getting a, uh, I believe the Decepticon is called, not Soundwave, could be Shockwave, that's coming out sometimes in November, and we got a little bit of a small glimpse that they're working on a Cybertronian Bumblebee model kit. And then they have a bigger collectible figurine coming out. I think it's a collectible figurine, might be a model kit. 
that's clocking in close to three thousand dollars by no means i'm not buying it <laughs> okay i'm not buying it there are a lot of things happening in my life right now where 3k can be easily invested towards paying a, a well-cooked meal a car payment you know the only time I will actually take consideration of building that big Optimus Prime model kit is if Yol Park sent it to me. I'm not going to spend 3K on it. So you guys shouldn't either. Buy this model kit. You will not be disappointed. I guarantee you, you will have a blast. And like that, my dudes and dudes, thank you guys so much for watching this long video. Do appreciate the love and support. If you guys do me a big favor, give this video a like, thumbs up, share with your loved ones, become a patron to help support the next build, and I will see you dudes and dudes on the next build.